Now let's see whether we can apply what we have studied so far. Let's go. This is an advanced level 987 question 2. Or sample question. Use the elements beryllium, boron, and carbon in compound formation with chlorine to illustrate that the number of covalent bonds formed by an atom is not always equal to the number of unpaired electrons in that atom. In the ground state given, A, there are detailed configurations in the ground state. So I was supposed to provide the detailed configurations of uh, these three elements here. Okay. So detailed configuration. Good. So in the ground state, right? So we have ground state configuration. Ground state configurations. Beryllium. 1s2, 2s2. Boron. 1s2, 2s2, 2px1. Carbon. 1s2, 2s2, 2px. 2 p y Left is right. 4, 5, 6. Good. So based on Hans rule of maximum multiplicity, right? The degenerate orbitals are filled first before pairing. That is why I didn't put all in 2 p x Good. From periodicity. The number of unpaired electrons of each atom in the ground state. Let's do that again. So this is A. How many unpaired electrons do you have there? The number of unpaired electrons in the ground state, right? Hope you understand what, what, what is meant by unpaired. Okay, let's look at the B. The number of unpaired electrons of each atom in the ground state. Let's go. Look at this. How many unpaired electrons are here? They are all paired. So for the first one, I have zero. How many unpaired electrons are here? I have only one. How many unpaired electrons are here? Good. They are detailed configuration in the excited state. Okay. So, excited state configuration. Let's go. That's a citation, right? 1s2, 2s1, 2px1. Boron, 1s2, 2s, 2px, 2py. Agree? Carbon, 1s2, 2s2, 2px, 2py, 2pz. Agree? Good. The way in which the orbitals used for bonding to chlorine are formed. Wow. So you remember what we said, right? So when you finish everything with your drawing, then you say, oh, maybe each sp3 overlap with this, or each sp2 orbital right, overlap with this to form maybe carbon, hydrogen, sigma bond. That is what they're asking you. But you are not talking about hydrogen again here. You are dealing with chlorine. Okay? Good. So D. The way in which the orbitals is useful. Bonding to chlorine are formed, right? Okay. The bonding to chlorine is as a result of either an SP, SP2. SP3 hybrid orbital overlaps with the PZ orbital of chlorine. That's all. So, how is it formed? So, it depends on the way the SP overlap with the P orbital, right? Let's see which P orbital, right? That's a PZ. Of the chlorine, or the way the sp2 overlap with the p orbital of the chlorine, or the way the sp3 overlap. That is how the bonds are formed. That's all. Okay. Good. 
Now, this point, the types of orbitals used for the overland. Now, when you go to Beridium, what do we use for overland? Check your statistics. The types of orbitals used for the overland. We have what? Uh, S, SP. That's SP orbital, right? What does Goron use for overland? Come on. The names of the shapes of the molecule. The names. So this is linear. That's linear. Okay, trigonal, planar. Tetra hydral. Good. Now, draw diagrams to illustrate the shapes and indicate the bond angles, right? We're going to draw diagrams to illustrate the shape and indicate the bonds, the bond angles. Okay. So I'll fix it here. I'll fix that in here. I can fix them here, right? Yeah. Let's go. So Beryllium will have this shape. Agree? I will be the chlorine. You see that? Good. You agree? And in case of one number, is that what I said? So that is 180 degree. Good. Now I will pick boron. I will pick boron. So boron. Remember, hybridize, hybridize, hybridize. Now uh, it will pair with the chlorine. Agreed? Yes, chlorine, chlorine, chlorine. One angle, 120 degree. Now, I have to move to carbon, right? Carbon. So carbon. Hybridize, hybridize, hybridize. If it's on hybridize, I'll not cross it, okay? Chlorine, 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 chlorine. One angle, 109.5 degree. That is it. 